And I just hit the button. I think that's going to do this. <clears throat> and fixed screens, you know, video screen. So are they? Oh, we're good. Yep. All yeah. right. So this is the Enfield Planning Board. It is September 20. No, it's not September 28th. It's uh, October, October 26th. I'm just reading off what he gave me. That. Did you get it wrong? I got October 26th. I got October. I got October. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know Sorry. what you're trying to pull on me, Rob. <laughs> it says October 18th, doesn't yeah, it? Right. Um, the wrong one. All right, maybe I pulled one out of my oh, out <laughs> yeah. of your something. <laughs> uh, okay, start over again. Take two. Uh, this is the Enfield Planning Board. It's October 26, 2022. Mm -hmm. This is the Enfield Planning Board. It's 701. I'm calling the meeting to order. We are at the Enfield Public Works facility. And um, members present from my left. Sorry. Let, let's wait until our guest um, settles in. Yeah, and so fix so that when you watch okay. the video, it's so. Members present, starting from my left. Linda Jones. Kate Plumley Stewart. Dan Kiley. I'm David Fract. Bill Ramirez. Brad Rich. Tim Jennings. Fred Cotthart. Our staff members are Rob Taylor. Whitney Banker. And Whitney is also an alternate. Yep. And our other alternates tonight are Fred Cotthart and Jim Bobbin. Okay, we do have a full roster of members, so I'm not going to elevate any of the alternates. However, you folks are encouraged to participate in the discussion. Um, public comments next. Does anyone have anything that they would like to address that is not on the agenda. Seely, anything you want to talk mm -hmm. about? Not mm -hmm. Ed? Not at this time. And who's here? Nancy. Nancy Where'd you go? There you are. Nothing. Okay. Uh, next is meeting from October 12th, the minutes. Anyone have any comments on those? Line 57, uh, last word, manager missing an A, not a big deal. In, in, that, in that area, um, so, they looked at the short term rental ordinance, which is now being handled handed on to the planning board. I, I think it should be either a semicolon or a period. The select board is not a land use board. It could say because the select board is not a land use board. Or not. Yeah. People want to accept that sure. amendment sure. change. OK. Anything else, Linda? That's a really matter. Line 87. Um, the word once should be one. Strike the C. Good catch. <clears throat> Line 351. Um, Ms. Jones asked if the ADU can be a mobile home. I think there was an answer to that. There was. Okay. It was no. <laughs> so you should probably add that. Um, Anything else? Back to 215. 
I'm a little confused there. I I understood that um, the mobile home that, that couldn't be ruled out as an A to U. Is that is that a misunderstanding of what was said? And I believe most mobile homes would not qualify as ADUs because they're larger than mm -hmm. 800, 800 square feet. I won't say all of them, but yeah, I would. well, I mean, you know, it's 12 by 50, 600, so it's a tiny house. No, that's not a no, tiny house. No, that's, that's no, no, I'm saying tiny small, house question home. mark. But anyway, and we're well talking about the minutes here, so yeah. I think maybe I don't know how to adjust the minutes here to say that we don't. You know, maybe that's a to be determined. Well, I I think the answer was that a mobile home was not considered an ADU, and that may be something that we talk about and change. I see. But yeah. in, in terms of what was said at at <laughs> right. the meeting. Which is what the Good minutes report. Okay. 215. Um, 15. Mm -hmm. Vice okay. Chair Kiley said that an example where this was not well used was the family dollar store that has windows on the front that to nothing. That go to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That do nothing. I'm sorry, that do oh, nothing. Do nothing. Okay. That do nothing. That do nothing. They're like, like other than meet the letter of the, no, of right. the ordinance. Right. There's a window, but it, it doesn't go through. They right. basically put a Shelby screen over right. the window. You see the back of Shelby. Right. Yeah. Is it? I thought there was no, sheet no, rock. It's like a sheet rock. They sheet rock right, right over it. Yeah. Yeah. There, it doesn't go through. It's glass just a window. It is glass and then sheet okay. rock. I, I have a suggestion for that, but we're not at that point. Right. <laughs> right. Um, anything else? I I have a couple. I have one on two. You want to go ahead, Kate? Um, line 464 and 465 is part of the discussion about um, when we were talking about references in the master planning document. Um, it says she did not see these references in the document the task force reviewed Monday, except I never got to see that. So. I think the discussion was that I didn't see references in the draft that you've seen before, but I didn't get to see the Monday document. I'm not. Um, I, I was on the on the call, but I didn't get to see. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, I, I get it. so I don't know how to make it because it was the reference to like I sat in the meeting, but yeah, I don't know how to make it. I just thought. Do we want to say uh, like she did not or during or reviewed during their Monday meeting? I, I don't know because I only saw it on the screen, so I'm like, I didn't actually see the document. Okay. That's kind of a hard one. <laughs> I wasn't really sure. Uh, line 443 toward the end, he said that it would be nice if the group, uh, and it says is the group, so is becomes if. Give me the line number. Uh, 443. At the end, is as if. Any more, Kate? No. Okay. Uh, I've got a few on line 100. It reports that I said, quote, this afternoon, the State Office of Planning reviewed the town's floodplain ordinances. Um, what I said or meant to say was that we had received um, an email from the state planning office informing us of their review of the town's floodplain ordinance. Is Line 139, um, large trucks. I would, yeah, I remember the conversation um, 
specifically talking about pickup trucks and that might uh oh yeah clarify yeah, that if we're not talking about box trucks or semis so it should say pickup truck yeah yeah um mm -hmm. Line 204, Mr. Jennings said he was unsure, was unsure of what this meant, and I do not know what this What the meant. this is? Oh, the, the, was the, the minimum, <laughs> the double, twice the minimum. Oh, okay. Uh, there were there a couple sections in there that right. I couldn't figure out. Yeah. I have to copy the names to see what we were. Just pick something. That was the one on the twice the minimum because I responded in order to get away from large empty parking spots, parking lots. I mm -hmm. should say parking lots rather than parking spots. I'd like a point of clarification on 389. Um, Mr. Taylor will draft the change to the R1 density. So my question is, is that proposed density within existing buildings only, or does that include new construction? I would include new construction, right. <clears throat> Anyone else have any changes for the minutes? Somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion that we accept the minutes as corrected. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Minutes are approved as corrected. Select board report. Eight. All right. The Enfield Select Board met on October 17th. Uh, main topics, there was a pretty lengthy discussion on a Methodist Hill property that the town currently owns. Uh, the Conservation Commission asked the board to consider not selling the property and a number of abutters and folks on Methodist Hill also spoke. So that's gone back to the town manager's office for consideration, obviously, it would have to have a plan and a proposal of some kind. So that's in the works. Um, no outcome other than, you know, it's being discussed and looked at. Uh, did a disposition of property on Johnston Drive. There's a um, caravan trailer, like a pull behind, um, that's going to be removed and two sheds taken down for safety reasons. So we approved that. And there was a warrant budget <clears throat> mailing discussion. So you know, over the years, we've changed from mailing the full town meeting giant book to not mailing it because of costs, uh, which are pretty substantial somewhere up, I think, in the $15,000 range. And uh, so the discussion was that we're going to mail the warrant itself. Um, so to get that out into households and then people will still be able to put out books. And I think we've discussed approaching local business owners, kind of like the school district does, and putting some copies out. So that, again, is being handled by the office. Um, discussion on calendar costs, and I think they're going to look at it. And, you know, uh, all select, three select board um, members agreed that we wait for it, use the paper calendar, and I'm included on the paper. So, and I know it's a rarity and kind of a joke about using paper in me, but um, it was a very interesting discussion. I think a good one to have. Uh, and then we accepted some more money for Lakeside Park. Any questions? Did I miss anything? In okay. Thank you, Kate. Uh, no hearings, no conceptuals, and now we get to the meat of today's meeting, which is zoning changes to be included on the 2023 town warrant. Can I have a document? Share. Based on our discussions for the last meeting. Are we going to discuss the um, short term rentals as a part of that? Uh, I believe that okay. is Thank you. on our list. <clears throat> Thank you.
pages on the back side uh, of, of, of the sheet that Rob just handed out. Okay. Yes. So let's get back to parking. I think we should have the 10 by 20 buys <clears throat> because of all the pickup trucks in town. And people can apply for extenuating circumstances. Yeah, I like the way it's written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree too. They want 18 feet instead of inches. Yeah, yeah. Point. <laughs> oh, short car. Yeah. This was a small truck. I typically got my glasses on. I'm like, oh. <clears throat> but no. this, this isn't really the uh, actual wording of the ordinance. I think we we're just talking about the, kind of like the theory. I think we're talking concept at this point. Yeah, these are highlights. Yeah. Right. The highlight is real. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I rather, I don't know, just the nine by 18, um, bump that to the ZBA because it is in the zoning. I mean, that's my personal preference because it is a zoning thing. Uh, and everybody's going to say, well, my, my lot is special because it's different than everybody else's lot. Well, I think to address your your point, which is a very good one. Um, Can we have one conversation at a time, please? The um, I guess the way I looked at looked at it uh, is that if uh, if someone's building a business, a retail establishment, or perhaps it's a apartment building or what have you. Um, the nine by eighteen can often be a, a business decision. You know, it could be something that, that you you don't you want to do, but you consciously do it because you you know that you're, you're the guests and whoever are going to be parking on your 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 land uh, that that could be an issue for them. So you may want to do ten by twenty just to make it easier for your customers to come in and out. That's sort of thing. Um, most I, I think what what we're saying here is it's 10 by 20 and then they're going to be rod Rob, and say look I I don't have enough room to do 10 by 20 not that I can't afford it or that the parking lot could be so much small you know it could be 10 foot shorter if, if I went to 9 by 20. So maybe the criteria for Rob is perhaps that needs to be a little bit more defined. Okay. I think we should just have the option. Yeah, I I think the same. I think maybe the key to it is long as they can't have enough spaces to meet the minimum number of spaces. I mean, I think was where it would be the problem if they can't if they can meet the minimum number of spaces with a ten by twenty, then the lot's not constrained. constrained. Right. I would only yeah. see it in the air when they can't meet. It says the minimum is you've got to have eight spaces, but they can't fit 10 by 12s, <laughs> but they could fit nine by 18s in order to keep the setbacks. Well, that's the decision point. That would be the right. decision point. It wouldn't be I want to have an extra five spaces, so right. I'm going to make them nine by 18. I think that's the way I was looking at it. Yeah, me too. Kurt? Um, well, on that point, it's not on your handout, but in my notes, I was looking at that also. And what I have here is, is that the number of under number of spaces. Right. Let the developer determine the number of spaces needed for retail or business businesses uses. I'm not sure of the language there, but my English. But require two spaces per bedroom for residential uses, and then I have a, a little breakdown of how many bedrooms and spaces. So. The main point is, if it's a retail, he's going to have a sense of what his customer base is going to be right. and his turnover rate on a hourly basis. And let them decide how many spaces they want to create because they're paying for them. 
and as a business decision, I would think they would not want to be creating more space that's never going to get used. Mm -hmm. So they uh, and let put the weight on them. And then if they come to us and say, well, I want a hundred spaces and we're looking at it, it's like, there's no way you need a hundred spaces. You're just being ridiculous because it's a national chain that says we build to X amount of spaces on our standards. Um, and then we say, well, you have to, and then it would do a parking study paid by them to justify paving out my uh, land because it's the paving and impervious surface that is my concern with excessive parking lots that never get used. I don't think we're going to run into that issue. Um, no. I, mean, I, I, I agree with you that yeah. it could be excessive, but I think. Right. Well, I don't foresee the someone coming in and saying, well, I want 100 spaces. And we're looking at it as like, there's no way you're going to use 100 spaces because yeah. the national chain says build this door with 100 spaces. Well, right, but there's a there's there's a reason for that, and it's a business decision they're they're making. I mean, they, as we mentioned before, right. just sometimes they put seasonal product out in mm -hmm. the parking lot. Yeah, I'm not going to second guess their desire to spend money on a parking lot there because I don't think they're going to build something not going to use. Why would they? Well, I I I think what we're looking at here is old theory in which retail had enough parking for Black Friday for the <laughs> maximum usage right. versus new theory, which is not billed for the worst possible case, but for something considerably smaller. But would it, would, do we know why uh, they built to Black Friday? Was that a corporate decision or was no, that, the, that, 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 that was, was generally planning decision yeah, yeah, back, right. back, back, in said, the, yeah. back in the 60s and 70s and maybe 80s right like the regulation said x amount of spaces or square footage number of spaces for x use and they just said yeah. do this if you want your permit yeah yeah so they that's what they did I, I, I mean, the, not even getting down to the town level on on a national level, you know, planners said you want to build your parking spaces for the maximum use scenario. Right, but it was a it was a domino effect. National planners said, "Here's the standard." Yeah, the town says, "Okay, we'll yeah. just adopt the standard." And that's changed. Yeah, you know, as as people see lots and lots of parking lots that are empty for 98% of the time. Because mm -hmm. um, they're sitting at home working on Amazon. And, and I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we're saying, I think we're saying that that's right. just naturally going to take care of us. I right. shouldn't really worry about them overbuilding the parking. I like uh, having it flows the land use administrator. I think one of the things we do when we don't put too much detail, you put just enough, is that we commit ourselves to continually hiring and developing good staff members who will have some of these important conversations because those conversations are going to be flexible and more current, right? So right now, we know Amazon's a hot thing, but if anybody's tried ordering anything recently and it gets in five to 20 days instead of two, now we're back to the Pony Express and it's not as great as going out and just getting it. So I think you're going to constantly see those ebbs right. and flows. And by having it go to the land use administrator, if they don't approve it, say, or the neighbors are, could, they could appeal to the zoning board. Is that, or would they appeal? They can. They can. So I think that is already yeah. in place if we have it flow through somebody that we're employing. Um, yeah, we just wanted to eliminate a, another CDA here. Right. Yeah, I, I think mm -hmm. for something that seemed rather minor. Mr. Chair, I just want to weigh in real quick. I, I, I don't want you guys to get too bogged down in it. I, I did some research on it. Basically, the, the smaller size is sort of the European standard of parking, the 9 by 18, and the 10 by 20 is more of the American standard. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's a hybrid there. It's 9 by 20 is sort of the hybrid between the two. Um, I definitely think, echoing what Kate was just saying, that to give it some uh, power into the hand of the administrator, not because I'm the administrator, but I think it, it does. We In this town, my observations, talking to other planners and other people in this industry, we do way too many variances in this town. We are mm -hmm. we are yes, variance heavy. Yeah, which which is not a good thing. Nope. I think we should 
give some flexibility. The parking thing, and I've been in seminars with people from the West Coast, and they basically say out there that not to fuss so much about the parking because the parking will take care of itself. If you go to a business and there's not enough parking, guess where you're going? Somewhere that's else. That's, that's, that's my point. And if there's not enough parking in right. Jim Kelleher's uh, new residential development on Main Street, they're going to find spots. They're yep. going to rent them from Kim Quirk right. or from Holmquist next door or whatever. Right. I think some of those problems can actually resolve themselves. Or they won't rent, rent from Jim Kelleher. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, yeah, the, the market exactly. kind of sorts I prefer this stuff two out. spots per per unit, but I just I worry that we shouldn't constrain ourselves to really pushing it right. too hard because we want the housing. And if it's got to be a trade off to get some housing in tight spots, that we have a smaller parking footprint, that's okay too. Because our hope is that mm. the market takes care of itself a little bit. So I don't mm -hmm. I don't want to get too bogged down here because we've spent a lot of time at the last meeting on this very subject. Yeah. And to me, there's other things in here that I want to get to that I think we're going to make way more hay. Ed? Yeah. I'd just like to play devil's advocate a little bit and say that we should have some caveat if we're going to change this. So we're talking about min the, the minimum spaces being that size because right. If you go anywhere else, there's subcompact spaces and normal size spaces, and I don't think we want to limit ourselves to only allowing mm -hmm. one size space. That you know, well, if they can get the ten spaces they're required, they should be able to put in five mm -hmm. or six subcompacts if they want to. But this wording says you have to have a ten by twenty. Well, I don't think it does. I, I, I think what it says is if, if if I want to go to Rob to ask for um, consideration of a smaller spot, it may be that I'm uh, out of my 20 spaces, I'm asking you for six of them to be small. There's nothing in here that says I couldn't do that. Yeah. Well, it does say 9 by 18 minimum, which is in a subcompact spot. Well, you may approve a minimum of nine by 18. Do you want us to approve? Some, I mean, is a subcompact spot or That's smaller the than that? standard, the nine by 18. They, some of them are. So I, I just think you put something around if you have a minimum amount that they need to have that many of the 10 by 20s. And then they can put spots in. However they want. However they want. Yeah. Which yeah. so they have five of those and they want to put them up front, then they can put them up. Or motorcycle spots. Some people have motorcycle spots. Mm -hmm. You've been discussing um, the retail, but if it's someone building a, a unit like Kelleher, I mean, the answer is since he didn't have enough space, he was building too much on that. I mean, we don't bring that up. Right, right. But we want the house because we're because we're trying to increase the density. Right. He came for five before. Now it's six. Right. And there wasn't. Yeah, but it's still like you were saying, okay. the, the project still has to fit on the lot. So, uh, um, it does. With, with, with the parking. Yeah. Here's a fun question: Are cars the future? This is a yeah. very, very limiting discussion when you think about only cars. Look at it like the Jetsons, right? How old is that car? Well, well that's next year. We've got no, but I'm saying <laughs> so. I think we're so focused on like ev like just cars. You're not considering all the other forms that come and park. And I don't want to say that cars are going to disappear overnight, but there are a lot of advances in technology and self-driving cars. And I think if we have an opportunity to have some more dense housing that consolidates things into the downtown on existing infrastructure. You know, do we really want to duke it out with people who, because we gave them a motorcycle space and a car space? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just too far into the weeds. And yeah, um, I, I, do too. I, I think basically it, it's good. It may maybe a word or two here could be changed, but I think it's yeah. the, the theory is it's pretty sound. The, the sentiment is good here. Yeah. I would agree. Right. Um, it still doesn't address number of number of spaces for prime <clears throat> site plan. So how do you want? But this is a different conversation. Yeah. This was the conversation of the size of the parking spaces. It was the ordinance that said the size of the parking spaces. The number of parking spaces isn't even this ordinance. It's if this is an A, it's down in the C D E, the number of spaces. But it's okay, but it's 
Do we want to address that with this zoning change? Not this one. No. Well, not with this, not with this paragraph here. All yeah. we're trying to do is come up with okay. a nine definition. by eighteen or a ten by twenty. Yeah. Not the other issues. Yeah. yeah. That would be a different zoning. Mm -hmm. That would be a different ordinance well, change. Well, well. I'm well, sure I agree with you, Dan, because um, I took a section of parking right. and marked up the entire thing as to some suggested edits that we should consider, right. one, one of which was the size of the parking mm -hmm. units. Right. So I think if we're going to address that portion of the ordinance, we should just do it all. All of the, and, and, and to get to your point, that those uh, those items are in there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I think you might be right, but it's it, it's a long, it's a much longer discussion. It is right, right. And, and it may we may not have the the right. time or the wherewithal to do that for this time around. Right, right. In terms of getting it on the because it one bite at a time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I mean, the if you look at the the top, what are you looking? What is this for? Parking spot standardization. It's not for a number of spots or anything else. We're just trying to come up with a standardized size for the parking space. In theory, it's a very simple change, mm -hmm. right? right? In theory, in if theory, we do a rewrite. In theory, we we're going do... from ten by twenty to ten by twenty, unless there's constrained lot, and it's up to him yeah. to say you can do nine by eighteen. Well, yeah, right. two sections in there that no one could even figure out how to apply. The I know. Agree. Can Absolutely. we not just pull those out? We can. I mean, we can. I guess I'd, I'd like to just take a, of another crack at, at summarizing. Those changes, I really think they're a lot simpler than we're thinking they are. Right. Bring that back and I mean if we're just we're just deleting stuff. Um, yeah. I I think that's easier mm -hmm. to do than trying to craft new language. And when we get to the um, the total rewrite of the zoning ordinance, which hopefully will be completed around this time next year. Um, you know, we can have a lot of discussions and hopefully we'll have a professional planner on board who knows some of these national standards and how other towns <clears throat> that are our peers have addressed it and how successful or unsuccessful they've been. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm definitely in favor of proposing some deletions for this year, but to to get into the weeds and rewrite the whole thing or rewrite, you know, how many minimum, what's the minimum? And it's that's just going to take up an awful lot of time that we don't have. So do you want to go? Can you go over the the deletes again? Uh, no. Do you have them with you? <laughs> I do, but I, I, it's yeah. I mean, that's all. Yeah, like you said, there's a line of the whole discussion, long discussion. Let's yeah. just, just simply delete the required space number of spaces required, and just say delete that paragraph. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah. leave it at that, and then we'll figure it out next year. Right. So I I think Rob, you have Tim's document, and just you know offline go through it and include those paragraphs that need to be deleted. Does that yeah, make sense to everybody? It does, and, and if, you, right. if you don't mind, uh, maybe Rod and I could work on that, because it's interpreting what the minutes said and the discussions right. we had, and okay, <laughs> what did we end up with at the end of the night? Yeah. I can't remember, but we, we can certainly do that. Well, I mean, it's an ongoing discussion, so you don't, what was said in the previous minutes was a discussion. <laughs> we didn't take any votes. So. No, but sentiment is... You know, yeah, sending this in a certain direction. I want to make sure we capture that. And I mean, you know, we're going to look at this again in two weeks. And, you know, at that point, I hope Rob will have uh, something that is a little bit more fleshed out than the document we're working with tonight. So if there's no objection, let's move on to the ADU. The question is increase two units. Mm -hmm. um, second ADU of up to 800 square feet shall be allowed in all residential districts, including R1, R3, and R5. 
The second ADU may be attached or detached and shall have no more than one bathroom and one kitchen. Isn't the definition of an ADU having its own bathroom and kitchen? Can't have no more than. Didn't I hear last meeting? Uh, how many bathrooms and kitchens can you put in an 800? Well, you could put two bathrooms. You could put two bathrooms. In. Well, what about one and a half? Oh, was, well, that's what I mean. You could. Because how about we don't even say. Wow. What does it matter? Yeah, so, what well, you, I, I was agree. reading. What does it matter? Use to find. Yeah. What a what is allowed? Right. So you have to work around that. Right. The, the state, state law. The state. Yes, yeah, yeah. The state, the state did law. say you can't have more than one 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 kitchen. It has to have a kitchen and it can only have one kitchen. Okay. Last week, didn't yeah. someone say that each ADU has to have its own septic tank or hook up? Its own tank, tank. but it can share a common leach, leach field if detached. the state approves it and it's detached. Right. And I think Tim's right. It can be a mobile home because, or manufactured home, because you do have manufactured homes under 800 square feet. Yeah. They're there's they're 18 by 36s the out there. And you see them in the yeah. campgrounds. They're right. mm -hmm. yeah. smaller, but they're right. basically mobile. Yeah, they're 18 by 36s out there. Um, so uh, I, I don't think the bathroom, stipulate the bathrooms no. is necessary. No. Well, it's um, interesting. Well, the reason I put it in there is because you guys could say the, 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 basically the state law is a minimum. You have to. You but could, you guys could exceed that. Right. So you guys could say the second AD, you could be a thousand square feet with two bathrooms if you wanted to. I I I don't think that's what we're after. No. But you guys could because mm -hmm. we're 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 allowing the minimum of the one ADU with one bathroom, one one uh, uh, kitchen. And where does the 800 yeah. square foot come from? That's a state. You that's could say, you could state. say for the second ADU, it could be a thousand square feet. Uh, yeah, the problem is the second one could be bigger than the original house. Then. Well, you could say that they can't well, be bigger than the original house. If you well, we we have we have our definition right. of what an ADU is, and from my point of view, I think we can just say we can add a second ADU with the same do. constraints yeah. as. Right. Yeah, I think keeping it exists. simple. Right. You know, is what we should do. Yep. It's right. The state law. Right. Yeah. Because we're trying to come up with density. Density mm -hmm. becomes <laughs> there's less density if you keep saying you can have 12, 1500 square foot. But it's yeah. not going to help you with the density issue. Now, so, it does require, I'll just throw this out there because I did have the conversation with our building inspector. It does require him to be a little less rigid with this. I mean, uh, you start getting two ADUs. So right. one house could have three units in it. Yep. That technically, is that multifamily? A multifamily yeah. has its own building code versus, but it's a single ADU. family with an ADU. So, but I think he's willing to work with us, and I think yeah. that you know, obviously, the spirit of this is reflected here. So, right? Yeah, I mean, I I would think if the ADU is eight hundred square or seven hundred and ninety nine square feet or less, it's an ADU. If it's over, then it's not an ADU, and three of them. Constitutes a multifamily. I have two things on this. One, I still recommend that we only allow one detached ADU oh, so we don't get a one compound. Detached. And then two, I think with staying with the spirit of the building code, that if you have three units in one structure, we should look at that as a multifamily because you're starting to get density inside one structure for fire code reasons and those types of things where we could be causing safety issues. But if they have two in one house and an outside house, I don't think their whole property needs to meet the multifamily code. But, but I mean, we're getting to the point where we're all allowing a little mini apartment complex into one, which is good to increase density. But I think From the safety when they're building that third ADU, we should look at some of those multifamily code yeah, I, I I think that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. So I thank you for clarifying word it that way. But Linda, um, Enfield has one of the largest historic districts in the state of New Hampshire, 
and we have a main street and the town with all the historic homes. And if we start filling it all in with an external ADUs, filling up the yard, I mean, someone's going to make money, but I think we're going to lose some of the attractiveness of the homes of the streetscape. And it looks like instead of taking things one step and see how it works, since it's been allowed, how many ADUs have gone in? Well, a lot. Yeah. But I would I would pause it to you. You can't tell. You, you can drive by a place. You can't tell if it's got an ADU. It's literally been put into existing structures and then done tastefully. I don't think it's deteriorating any of the history. But, but you're also going to allow manufactured homes, trailers, um, other things, and they could be in the yard. Well, I, I would suggest, and this is a proposal that I brought up, and I thought it had some traction, um, is that no new structures are allowed. I asked it when we went through the minutes if that included new new structures. The answer is yes. Detached is a new structure. Well, it's no. You, no. Uh, you take a a, take an existing structure yeah. like a, a garage or yeah. a carriage house and convert that into living space. That's that's not that, a new structure. That is why I asked for clarification. And I'll ask Rob for clarification. State law says you can have a detached, right? State law says that the towns can allow it. You don't, it doesn't have to be detached. Nope. Okay. And in some towns, in Plainfield, my hometown, you have to have special exception for detached. Okay. And Plainfield also went a little further that there's an architectural standard. So the detached has to sort of mirror the architectural style of the main right. complex. So I wouldn't have a problem with that. I wouldn't either. Okay. I, no, I, I wouldn't either. There's a lot of flexibility to the property. Yeah. Over. No. Okay. I no. You had a comment. It was, was it. Kind okay. Of um, <laughs> I I would I would maybe kind of divide this and say in the R1 we have tighter standards, and in R3 and R5 we could be a little bit looser on the requirements. I wouldn't. I think if you want to ask people to mirror the, I mean, hey, we might be asking to mirror something hideous, but you keep it straight so yeah. you're not, because right. then people get to accusing you of standard. Make it the yeah, I think the standard should go, go across all the district to make it fair. Is there a, is there a portion of the existing zoning order that deals with ADUs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we have it in the definition section, but we've we've basically adopted. I mean, we have the state we've adopted the has state. statewide zoning. Six seventy four colon thirty six has allowed our ADUs in all residential okay. zones in the state. So we did actually. Enfield was one of the first to, we first to do it. So it was Plainfield eleven, and it was very much. Oh, no, for uh, it started up here, and then the state looked at it and said, "This is really good." You know, I mean. And it's definitely happening out west. There's California, sixty thousand. Where is it? When you... It's in the definition section. If you go to the ADU accessory dwelling unit, and the at the end of the zoning ordinance. So the the sentence, Mr. Taylor will draft a change to the R1 density. My question was: this proposed density within existing buildings only? The answer was this includes new construction. So that's different yeah. section. We're talking about ADUs. The, the density in the R1 is coming up in just a few it's minutes. A in the next section then. Uh -huh. Right. So ADU is not sub, uh, subject to density. We can't tell anybody that they have to have acreage for an ADU. Right. And, and that's been one of the reasons why it's been they successful. Have to meet yeah. But they have to meet setbacks and they have to have septic, correct? Right, right. And right. septic is the big kicker. Right. So this must not include right. additional requirements for lot size, frontage, space limitations, or other controls beyond what would be required for a single oh. family dwelling. Right. right. That's that state. It must not require separate water and sewage systems. Okay. Dwelling okay. 
That's not. That's not. Interesting thing about the septic system, you guys talking about that, and the requirement there is that we require you to have it designed, but you don't have to install. Right. If your existing septic system will withstand the additional load. Right. Basically, you have it in the bank if you need to build the system that's required, right. mm -hmm. but you can you can continue on with what your system. Okay. Yeah, you're, I you're just said that. <laughs> yeah, approval to increase load on sewage disposal system. Right. Yeah. If you're if you if your your home is connected to the town sewer, and you just connect into that same line with the yeah. ADU. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Does it have to have a tank then? No. Oh, no. No, it's because it's a con it's just a connector. Does it, count, we'll get, does it count as a second connection? It does not, and we'll get the additional revenue revenue based on the water meter spending much right. faster. Right. Could there be a separate water meter? The, it really depends on whether we don't, the owner. No, we don't make you have a separate water yeah. meter because oh. it's connected to the residence. So you got to figure out who pays then. Right. Or yeah. spend more. Yeah. <laughs> so you either build it into your rent or you decide you want to have another meter in connection. There's two ways to do it. Yeah. It's a business decision. So our ADU definition, a single apartment, no more than 800, containing no more than two bedrooms and one bathroom. Bring that's kitchen. Nothing about a kitchen, huh? <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to be building two kitchens in a small apartment. Well, yeah. Well, it's, it's just odd that that's not in there. It's allowed the second. I, I, I think it isn't an ADU a dwelling unit? Accessory dwelling unit. Yes. Right. So a dwelling unit has to have its own yeah, but cooking and, and bathroom yeah, facilities. Right. So it, it kind of ties together, even though it's not so explicitly it's, spelled out. If I'm hearing everybody cor correctly in this discussion, we'll strike the, the bit about one bathroom, one kitchen. From this mm -hmm. proposal, right. we will also add. Is it one attached, one detached, and the detached has to be architecturally similar to the main structure? Is that Correct. what you want? Well, right. can't we have two ADUs in the same in a big house? That wasn't what right. he said. That's what he said. Right. Well, yeah. then you get into the multi family, but, but then you've got to you've just got to meet the multi family. Could, but you need to meet the multi family. Okay. Building. You've got to meet the multi family. Right for safety reasons. Right. And I would word it where you can have one exterior structure because we talked about this yeah. last meeting. If you have one big barn, you could put two eight hundred square foot ADUs in the in barn. Mm -hmm. Right. right. I will say, just responding to what he's just said, then the ADU is not required to meet multi family, single ADU. A single ADU is not, and whether it's the reason for that is because we want people to convert existing space to ADUs. Yeah. But if we make them follow the the multifamily code, you're kind of making it less likely to happen because of the fire separation. You're gonna have to resheet rock the whole place. Well, that would be three in one building. Yep, and that would be three in one building. building. But you could have, but you could have, the you could have an tank. ADU. You could have a single ADU in the main building and one in an out building, one or, one or you could have two in an out building. Okay. Am right. I getting this but, right? Yes, yes. But not three. But not three. Right. But not three. <laughs> okay. So I think going too detached is, you know, it's only one building, though. One building. One building. Apartments. You two, could have two, two apartments and a marriage house. Two apartments. You could have upstairs, downstairs, right. left, right, whatever. Yeah, we did. Um, well, the old so fan insurance that was it was a Gambrel garage there, yeah. right? There's actually a, a apartment downstairs and upstairs in there. Right. And it still mm -hmm. kind of looks like well, okay. Well, I, maybe I misunderstood. So you can either have a main structure and an ADU enclosed, right? Attached, right? right. Or you can and and then you can have in a separate unattached on the same lot. Yes. So right. you, have you two, have one, one. One. Now, can you have the main structure and two detached ADUs? No, if they're the if they're in the same structure. No, no, no. Detached. You're saying if two, two, two detached. No, two structures. One main structure, two detached. No, no you. You're, you're saying can, one main you structure can, with you no can ADUs. You can have Correct. one one main structure, Simple. and if your so we'll outbuilding your barn is big enough to accommodate two ADUs, 
you can put no more than two ADUs in that barn. But you if it's big enough, but you can't, but you can't build a new structure or, or and, expand it. And you can't have an ADU in addition in the main house. Right. Cannot. Agreed. Right. I get that part. I'm, but you still, I don't know if the language covers, say I'm, I'm a builder. I see this and I read this. I'm not, not sure, sure if it's I can. Off. And with a lawyer coming in, says, I have my main structure, my main family, that's it. Now I want to build two separate buildings. You no. call them no. ADUs. No, no, no. Well, I'll put that you wording can, in. You can only, have, it has to be in there. A single detached. You can only have a single build detached. Out. Okay. Build that's, that's, building. That's, 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 the structure. Okay, so you have a lot with ready. one house, yeah. right? You have a lot with one house. Old school, right? And the barn has fallen down because that happens a lot around here. And you decide, I'm going to rebuild barn or garage, and I want to put two ADUs in. Are we going to say right. no? We're going to say yes. We're going to say yes. Say yes. Well, I mean, if we're saying no new structure, and it's, are we going to make them I didn't do say the new structure? Stru okay, that's but I, that was in the discussion. So I'm just saying, I think that that's a, not a great idea to say no new structure because yeah. to me, that's ideal, right? You're fitting all the stuff okay, into one why, space. Why don't we? Why don't we say no additional structure? That would be an additional no, structure. That's it's additional brand new structure. structure. I no, think that I'm all in favor of new structure. Single because, structure, two ADUs. I'm all in favor of new structures because they can be made much more energy efficient. They yeah, can put right. solar on them. Yeah, that's true. Be way more efficient than these these old houses we got around here. And they, I, 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 I will I will agree that if you know if I had an old barn, I could tear it down and put a new structure on it. Okay, yeah. but if I had an old barn <laughs> and I wanted to put up. Um, a two unit ADU in addition to that, I would say no. But what about if you're building from scratch? It's, it's an empty lot. We're, we're, I think what we just said is we're saying yes, because we would prefer one building, one new building because one of the building code. Footprint. One, one footprint. Well, uh, footprint, with, okay. One footprint. new footprint would be, and you could still keep your barn, but you'd have a new structure. The maximum of one new footprint. Yeah. yeah. And you could have two ADUs in that one. Yes. New, Right. Okay. You can't have two I separate detached footprints. That, 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 that I will work on build. this. Okay. okay. Let, yeah, we'll send it out to you guys for. Let, let yeah. him wordsmith it. Yep. Because it's going to take some more. I think I've got it. I mean, but I will. T I mean, I will say to you guys this. I don't know what you're thinking of. This is pioneering. I mean, you guys would be. Enfield would be cutting edge with this. <laughs> which is not a bad thing. I'm telling you. I mean, this is. Okay, let, I'm proud of you guys. This is so, good stuff. So let's let Rob <laughs> let it, work let's. on it. And <laughs> at our next meeting, we will discuss the language that he comes up with and decide if what he wrote is what we collectively meant him to write. Okay. Next. Okay. Next. Next. Yes. okay. And could you, um, is it okay for Rob, once you get that drafted up, to just send it to us? Can you think? I wish he would. Is? I will send it to you. The The key there, though, is that you guys can respond to me, but you can't respond to everybody. Do Understood. not right. have to reply all. Yeah, but so we can Fine. read this up prior to yeah. the meeting. Yeah, so get our together. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I, 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 I think the notes. key yeah. is yeah. to get this stuff out the, the Wednesday, a week before. Yeah, yeah. 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 That yeah. way people yeah. have time. They have a weekend to look at it yep. and cogitate on it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The next one I like as written. <laughs> I am with you, Dan. Because yeah, all I'm doing is it's meant to be very simple. simple. I'm yes. with you, Dan. And I will say that's an easy change. And related to that is the next one after that. If you remember in the R1 language, there yeah. is a, a weird. It's, it's paragraph U. It's the last paragraph in the R1. It says no lot shall have more than one dwelling or principal building, and it's like what? I don't know why that one dropped in there. Basically, the development that we saw conceptually, this would help, but it would also eliminate because we say in there, multi uh, unit, multi family is going to be reviewed by site plan. And but then right later on, we say not more than one dwelling. So it's like, what? What are you talking about? It's sort of so just striking. Yeah, just get it out there. Strike it. Next. Yeah, strike it. Question. Hello. Hi. Nancy's got a question. Hi, Nancy. Hi. I wanted to know if it if um, all of this has anything to do with use of the buildings, the accessory dwelling unit. 
Um, are you going to restrict its use in any way? It's a dwelling. It's a residence. Well, what if I want to rent it out for a week or a day? I mean, are, are, is it going to be eligible short for short term? Short term. Short -term. Short -term. Real short term. Yeah. That's coming yeah. up next. Just questioning. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's coming up. It can. Yep. Yes. I don't think there's any, nobody's proposing anything, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Nobody's <laughs> okay. prohib, prohibiting uh, no. short term rentals. No. Well, you want to think about that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, wait a minute. I'm still back at the one quarter acre. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, questions or comments on that, too? Go ahead. So if it doesn't relate to the ADU, what is it relating to? So the way it works right now is if you, uh, so you can have a single family, multi, uh, two family or multifamily in the R1, let's say. This is the mm -hmm. R1 we're talking about. If you want to come in and you want to build a duplex, two family in the R1, right now you need two acres unless it has sewer and water from the town available, mm -hmm. then you can go to a half an acre. I'm sorry, one acre, one acre because acre. you need a half acre for each of the dwelling units. And so uh, basically what we're proposing here is to double that density right. with sewer and water. Right. So it didn't have anything to do with, with ADUs no, getting no, no, doubled no, no, in no, how no. you count them. No, 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 because if you had that, Say you did the quarter acre lot and you built a house and then later decided you wanted to put an ADU in there, you'd have to be you'd be restricted by the setbacks severely. So your ADU would probably have to be uh, is a room in the in the house, house itself, something like that. Room in the house be small. Yeah. Right. And I think is our minimum eight is Seven to seven fifty is the minimum for the state. Eight yeah. fifty thus, or is it? We have no eight hundred. Eight hundred is outside. Is that a max? That's a max. Max. I'm sorry, max. Okay. You know, you could do a four hundred square foot ADU if you think you could rent it. So, what this specific one talking about the R one is trying to take advantage of the fact that we have sewer and water from the municipal side right. of things, and and if you look at the R1 in the last 50 years since we built the system, was it 1970-something? The it density in the village has not increased. Has not increased. It's been largely unchanged, which is actually counter to what we originally intended. Right. Uh, and so we're, we're hopeful, or I'm hopeful, that this gets adopted because we want more ratepayers on our sewer system, and we want more density where the village is. That's where we have services. We yeah. have bus lines. More we have people, libraries, more businesses, stores. Exactly. And I, I think we're just being vital. The, at the cost of our main street kind of looking like a shabby neighborhood. I get that. Absolutely. Yeah. But we don't regulate class and style. No. Nope. You, you know that. Can't. But you can yes, show that answer that. Of those well, form based zoning. Form based zoning, we've got it in the root four district. Oh, I'm just that's a separate issue, but we don't right now in R1. We don't. Right. Um, my only concern is I agree with the quarter acre lot. I, my concern is the timing. I feel, I personally believe that should be done after the master plan is adopted, and then you have that to fall back on for your reasoning. And, and you're also waiting 18 more months to do this. We've it's been that way for 20 years. Well, no, years. you're not because we're you're going to adopt it prior to town meeting, aren't we? Uh, the master plan? That's the plan, that's right. hopefully. At the yeah. same time, it's... Well... Is well, there any reason to believe we wouldn't adopt it? Okay, well... that I'm aware of. Okay, um, so, so the master plan gets adopted, and then the intent is then we do a complete review, rewrite of the zoning front, front to back, Right. And we will be looking at all the different zones mm -hmm. and hopefully the setbacks in all the zones. Yeah. And yeah. the acreage in all the zones and do it then. Yeah. I don't, as opposed to piecemeal. I don't think you want to wait that long for this particular this issue. This one's a super easy and short this one. Is relatively easy to understand and will drive behavior of yeah. what we want. Well, the, you, 
uh, right well, above it, you already just, have people able to do a second ADU. We're not talking ADUs, Linda. We're no, talking, but you're probably talking density. Lot size. We were referencing density. And right. when you go to Quadra Acre, we're still keeping the same setback requirements. Right. So right. how does that come into play? If they have adequate. If they damage. have enough land. Yeah. You got a half but, acre of land, you take it to. Well, it's not. It's more of how big of a house do you want to build? Right. So then you get then you run into the problem of I want this size house because this is what I want, but quite and it's quite a raker. You have to go to the zoning board and get a variance. Right, you get a, you might fall into that problem again. <laughs> or or you decide that you're going to have a smaller house people, because no, no, because no, you no, bought they're going to go to the, they're go to the CBA. Most people, when they buy a lot, are smart enough to know what is or is not going to fit. And if they don't, <laughs> that's on them. I'm sorry. And the R1 setback. There's no responsibility. And they'll just say, I'll get a variance. The R1 setback is 15 feet. Side, side 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 okay. <laughs> you don't yeah. know, shame on you. In terms right. of setbacks. But yeah, I, agree I, agree with, I think the setbacks is a big one. I absolutely right, agree. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I haven't worked out what the R1 setback on a quarter acre lot is. But I think that's something that. That's why I think it should wait until we do all the lots and look at the whole thing at, together. It's, I, it's not going to change for the R1 district. I don't, we're not going to change setbacks. No, why? we're not going to make them any smaller. Why not? Why? Yeah. Oh, probably because like, the neighbor next to them doesn't want somebody looking in their bathroom. Well, I mean, well, <laughs> each. You, well, the, house, well, the house gets fire. built to the max. If zoning, if zoning gives, gives them in the R1 district mm -hmm. to have a setback less than 15 feet, then I'm sorry, that's a bad decision. Yeah, because you, 15 feet is about as minimum as I can see anybody wanting to have mm -hmm. next to the house next to them, because then the house next to them is going to say, oh, I want five feet too. Well, and fire safety, right? I right, mean, exactly. Look, look, a lot of things the in the country are piece. based on you either need a firewall or a certain amount of distance for fire mm -hmm. safety. Right. And not that we have the plague here right now, but you know, pests go from building to building. So I think it's very important to leave that. Um, and if you've ever lived in a downtown building, oh, which yeah. I grew up in, and Hazelton, um, I've been able to see into my neighbors, and they. Yeah, been but able, the way we, it's I not. I mean, great. you're saying you don't it, want that, but then, then you took people standing around and say, "We want the classic downtown village, which mm -hmm. is very tight setbacks." So I, it's. It's pretty tight at fifteen. Yeah, but that's what you know, but, you know. So it's sort of like. People 15, say, say they want to build. Well, well, I'm saying, okay, it's, like, it's a little yeah, what, right. across this room, just a little bit more. Like, yeah. yeah. I, just, I, just, I just think that's yeah. the time. I should just wait. I'm not opposed to the concepts. I just think the timing would be better yeah. if it's done mm -hmm. on a broader scale. If all the lights done at once. But we can always re relook it if we do the big, the big scale later yeah. on. Well, yeah, but well, once the cat's out of the bag, you don't yeah, get but, them back in very easily. I, well, but it, so we're gonna. This would be a separate warrant article to change this R one. Right, and, right. Along with these others. And no, no. This is a separate it's article. A separate article. Just this right. one item. It's gonna right. Be right. Voted on. Right. Yep. So if if we propose it, and as you say, we don't have the the master plan in place to. Back it up, if you will. The voters are either going to disapprove it or, or they're going to approve it. Right. Right. And so if right. they say no, I mean, then, we'll, then we'll go at it. Then it's no. Then it's no. And we, when we come back to do the full one, we're going to say, I guess we're going to leave it the same. But or I maybe say it's in about half. Just a second. Yeah. See you later. The other thing is air and light. Right. And that's part of that reason for setback. People have had problems with that already right. over the years. Get too close. Yeah. I would hope that Conservation Commission would support this kind of idea because we're putting more housing where the services are and we're right. going to put them hooked to the sewer system to keep fresh water. And hopefully that takes the pressure off the. the the, the outer, the outer land. Well, exactly. Well, I don't in the, in that, theory, that does, but I'm I mean, not sure in theory it does. Right. Well, on paper, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, because well. you, you, you'll, you'll have the people that want to live in a downtown environment right. live right. in a downtown yeah. environment. Right. You're still right. going to have the same pressure on the R5 zone as you right. do now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have no desire to live downtown. I want to be on the country. Yeah. yeah. 
but you're, you know, you're of an age group where you want, you right, know, I know. I 15, 15 acres and you it. want your house in the center of it. Oh, wait, hey. I don't like and, neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? <laughs> you're working on old school. Oh, please, I'm with you. You're young. <laughs> you're young. I'm just got to comment. Go ahead, Jill. <laughs> I'd like to oh. know if this density to a quarter acre affects any large developments. Of course it, it does. does. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it will. Oh yeah. And, and to your so point, it would, it would affect the Larrabee Farms development. He told us before he left that he was waiting to see what he did because I mentioned that he had logged the entire area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I'm just waiting to see what the town does. Uh, then I'll come back for a little help. Well, the, I think in this case, he would go from 150 some to about 300 some units, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like that. He told us he would want, he wants to do that. So that's that would happen if we change this. Well, we can also, and correct me if I'm wrong, we can also impose uh, a time frame and do it as a phased development over a period of years mm -hmm. so that the town doesn't have 328 new residences all at once. You're saying well, I don't, do I don't think we can determine um, the phasing. I yeah, think we, we, we shouldn't probably have this discussion. No, I'm not trying cannot, to be mean, yeah, but we can't talk no, any, right, any developer okay. in the I-1, if this passes, now has quite a rake a lot. Quite yes. a rake is if they have if water, on sewer. If okay. they're on water sewer. Yes, period. And yes. it's okay for folks to ask. It's okay for them to have ideas. It doesn't mean they're going to get approved, right? Um, right. And we're going to work with them and we'll be, it's a learning process. So I think we need to be open to that process for everyone. This just right. sets the expectation that density is a possibility. And yeah. it's, and it's from what I'm reading in the master plan, it is what the master plan is asking for yeah. is more density mm -hmm. and more density in this area. Yeah, Rob. I was going to say uh, just back from the planners conference last week, and I think the future holds in Enfield. And this is what's happening in other communities, particularly larger communities, is that you actually offer bonus density for affordable things that you content. want. And I'll give you an example: affordability. Mm -hmm. um, if you're willing to make 10% of your units affordable by a certain standard, whether it's the base income levels or poverty line or whatever, then you may be able to get more units yeah. or you may be able to violate mm -hmm. setbacks in a different way. So I think that's mm -hmm. when we start talking about zoning for equity and fairness right. and those kind of things, maybe in our future, if we do a redevelopment of our zoning ordinance. Well, and that is in the state regs for alternative development schemes and there are model ordinances that the state has put out that, you know, maybe we think about adopting them when we do the big rewrite. Um, Let's see, that to me is a reason to support Kurt's notion that we should wait. Primarily because if, if those are things that we want to think about doing, that's not something we're going to be able to figure out in the next three months. But do we want to limit to afford? I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. Do we want to limit to affordability when we can have quarter acre lots and they could be a standard market right. rate yeah. for that rate? Um, I'm I'm personally fine with having the market set the rate for these quarter acre lots and then addressing the bonus density separately. That's just my feeling on that. I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. I, I think generally the bonus densities apply to larger tracts of land that are subdivided or otherwise a lot more people, a lot of people are domiciled on that large tract and you might trade off things like conservation. Um, you, you, I mean, there, there are even schemes where a developer might buy conservate might buy up land in an R5 district, put it in conservation with uh, you know a permanent easement to the town, 
And then that developer gets, let's say, 10% extra bonus density because he's conserved, you know, he's conserved land in other parts of town. And that, you know, that's something that we can look at down the road. But, you know, looking at it realistically, um, going down to a quarter acre, it, it can only be beneficial to the town. And I'm, I'm in favor of doing it sooner rather than later. Yeah, and you guys, I mean, you can change next year. Right. Well, see, I, I think that causes problems when we well, go well. to change on the ballot for if we do a complete rewrite of the zoning. And if this quorum R1 gets tweaked again, through that process, I think I just think it just adds confusion to the matter. But let me let me ask a question, and maybe Rob knows the answer. Um, within the R one district, how many non conforming lots are there? What percentage? A lot. I don't know. A lot over fifty percent. And and one of the things that the master plan recommends is that the the zoning ordinance be rewritten to reflect what's actually on the ground and by going to a quarter acre in the r1 i think we would solve a lot of that problem well that's only a portion of the r1 though no the portion that's on sewer yeah right yeah but is, it it we, would, it the, would the solve new, a lot of that problem the new zoning reg probably won't have R1 anymore. It'll have village district. It'll have a right, right. Well, that's, that also leads to you know, there could be ten or fifteen it. different districts. What's wrong with waiting another based year? Based on what's what's on the ground. I don't see a reason to 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 rush into this either. I, I think we we've got the ADU options that are going to be. Apparently, we can. I think those will pass. Town meeting. Uh, that's going to generate a considerable amount of. Hopefully, some some uh, some building. But the thing that this does is that it would really drive more users on the septic and, and sewer. I realize and, and that, that's but really important. But waiting a year till till this thing is fully fleshed out and we have all those questions answered is not going to hurt us a bit. I disagree. We that. won't. I disagree. Yeah. I, disagree. I think we can say that about everyone. I'm we can say that about right. everyone. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but, but it's. But it's something we know we're going to be doing a complete rewrite of. It's not like just waiting on some standalone thing. Then well, we're not going to look at review it for another five years. Why, why don't we take this paper and, and rip it well, up no, and, I and mean, not I, do anything? Well, I'm just referring to changing the zoning, we, changing the lot size. But that's everything. Can we just do a straw poll so maybe we can? Uh, I, would, I was getting to that, Kate. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I love you guys, but comment first. <laughs> okay, well, well, I'll take one more comment from Linda, and then if anybody on that side wants to say anything, we'll take a comment there, and then we will have a straw like? poll. <laughs> <laughs> Linda. I would ahead. like to see some design guidelines in place before we go to one quarter acre. This is something that the Heritage Commission is working on now as part of becoming, bringing Enfield um, up to speed with a certified local government and uh, and the purpose for that is because we can get much larger grants. You can move the comma on the grant proposals. I think certified local government has to go in front of the select board though. No, um, that's on the list. Right, no, it's a it long process. The, so. Yeah. Well, and I don't know yeah. if it's a priority for our goals that so we're going to be setting goals. So that's going to be a discussion about whether what we set for goals and how we align things. Yes, and that's why the first stop after uh, will be the select board. So you'll hear about it right away. Lee, Lee Ed, anything? No. All right, straw poll. <laughs> um, anyone who thinks we should jump into the quarter acre lot change for this year or for 2023. 
raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Alternates as well. Five. Mm -mm. No, no. Get, okay. I guess this is more more of a formal oh. vote than a straw yeah, vote. Yeah, I was going to say that it's not a straw vote. Um, I make a motion that we put this on the table. I a quarter it. acre. I second it. You mean on the warrant? Okay. On the warrant, not on the table. Well, Why on the warrant. Why me like that? On the warrant. <laughs> well, you, you, you've got to do some wordsmithing to fit all this in there. Right, yeah. Right. That the concept of a quarter acre in the water and sewer district be on the warrant. Mm -hmm. I second it. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, indicate by raising your hand. Two, three, four, five. And all opposed. One, two. The ayes have it. Do we have to record names when we have a split vote? No. No, you only have to do roll no. call if there's attendees. Ten, on the, attendees are on the. Okay. All right. Um, next, short term rentals. Um, we're all okay with striking that. What? We're all okay with striking this, right? We're all okay with striking the paragraph U. Yeah, right. That was that was probably one of the easiest things <laughs> that we have to deal with. <laughs> well, so can I just give a quick presentation on the short quick, term? Sh give a quick presentation on short term. So I, I, I helped put this together. Um, it's, it's drawn from other communities that have done something similar. It is not meant to prohibit short term, short term rentals. It is meant to regulate them in a way of safety. And what we're concerned about, we're starting to see this become much more prevalent around the town. The Blooper were Lake Town, and there's plenty of properties that can be short term rented. And we're concerned that this is primary, a, primarily a lake thing. Doesn't have no, to be, but it's no, primary. Yeah. primary. Yep. Um, yeah, but it's town wide uh, ordinance. There right are here. communities in Plain in uh, New Hampshire that have tried to prohibit, and there's Supreme Court active cases on that right now. Um, but uh, what we're most concerned about is safety and impact to neighbors and neighborhoods. And uh, this, if you if you if you've read through, is is proposing a permit with some modest fee associated to try to cover some of the administrative costs. But we're talking about things like making sure there's a fire extinguisher in there, making sure there's off street parking, posting the number of bedrooms, and limiting the number of uh, occupants to some correlation between the bedrooms and, and so forth. And so uh, it's sort of been. As a, is this as an effort to try to get out ahead of what potentially could be a problem? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's really starting to we're starting to see like we're starting to see hedge funds investing in uh, short term rental properties. And are we in this town? Yeah, there are some. Yes, there, there's been some yeah, big lakefront that have been purchased by out of town people that have no in interest in living in this town that live that live in New York. So Europe. absentee yeah. ownership, which well, is Massachusetts one of our big frustrations. We mm -hmm. want to have at least something. If you read in there that we've asked for some kind of a contact, mm -hmm. if there's going to be absentee ownership, that we at least have somebody local that we can contact if there's trouble. These are the kind of things that we sort of threw into the ordinance as a proposal. Obviously, it can be wordsmith. There's still some discussion over whether it's a land use or whether it's a select board. Um, I did see an article in the paper recently. Hanover has done something about just regular rental. They're going to be inspecting rental properties because of obviously the pressures, of the college and the hospital. So just throwing all those things out there. Um, you know, the problems haven't been terrible yet here. Um, I will tell you that. Uh, is there a, is there a record of the problems we have had that we could look at? Yeah, so I anecdotally, I can tell you about some of them. I know that Lower Shaker, which is a village on Mascoma Lake down by the uh, Shaker Museum, they have prohibited rentals short. They've prohibited short term rentals under 30 days, and it's because of the impact to the neighborhood there. They just were having so many people like getting knocked on the door. Where, where, am I, where can I put my trash? You know, like that kind of stuff. And so, again, that's sort of built into this. So that's it's, a homeowners association. That's a homeowners association that is regulating yeah. it in their instance. And they can't. 
And we've had it in my hometown. We've had a couple of absolute horror stories. Our assistant town clerk has the short term rental in Warren and has an absolute horror story with uh, over exceeding capacity and causing a septic system to fail with too many people using it in the very short amount of time. Uh, those are the kind of things that I'm most concerned about is, you know, from a water quality standpoint to the impact to the lakes and impacts to the neighbors because as we said how many conforming lots do we have on these lakes not very many mm -hmm. they're very tight is there any issue for making a regulations or an ordinance on property lake property in particular where the people that own that property are not town residents and don't have a voice is, is there is there any discussion of that not necessarily so, so we can implement this if we wanted to, regardless of whether or not someone has a voice that happens to own a piece of property on the lake but doesn't live there. You have a voice and that you can always call the town office and yeah. our employees and select board of members of committees, but you don't get a, a vote. A vote. You don't get a vote. Yeah, you don't which is different than us. Yes. That's taxation that's their choice. without representation. Yeah. That's their that's choice. Right. That's, that's, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. That's baked in the cake. Though. I mean, that's, it's, but it's they a choose to register to have a second home. wherever yeah. they want to. They can be a registered voter in Enfield and live in Florida right. or vice versa. Sure. But they have to live in Enfield for know, half a year. Half a year plus one, one day. day. No one comes and counts it. <laughs> no, no, nobody counts. counts, but, you know, to be 100% legal about it, you have to make up your mind. Ed? As I say, yeah, everything's that way. Right. I and mean, the people that right. live out here, if they don't get it to choose if we build a public safety building or not, but they get to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You know, this is me, a, I understand that. This is just <laughs> another ordinance that yeah. right. is there. And, you know, the horror story that he told of our deputy clerk is one of the things that we're really looking at before we have problems. You know, she wasn't renting to 30 people that infiltrated her house. She was renting to four or five and 30 showed up. Right. Mm -hmm. This gives us a little bit of those teeth to show up when the neighbors come yeah. and say there's 30 people here and we yeah. go. I think know, I think this I, I agree with everything you're saying and, and I, I lean towards something like this, but I think it's a big step. I think this is a big step. And now do I like the fact that my neighbors are renting short term rentals? No. But to make it much more difficult for them to do so. And, and the reason the what is it about this that's making it difficult? This, this is a lot. Uh, this is a lot. I, mean, so, I got a whole page of questions on this. So yeah, <laughs> what's making I, I it think difficult? This is a lot. Serious, and so you, 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 the reason, okay, just from my neighbors, the reason they do it is why? Why are they doing it? To afford to pay their to pay, yeah. to afford to pay the taxes, yeah. which on these lakes, as you well know, is out of sight. Yeah. And that's why they do it. I think this. And we can get into the nitty gritty over beer if you want. Yeah. Uh, makes it hard. Yeah. There's a lot of hoops and a lot of steps to go through, and it's not going to be received well. We may vote this in, and and I would probably vote for it. Yeah. But it's not going to be received well, and um, I'm not sure we're ready for that. Again, we I mean we we've, we've pitched it a couple of times in various audiences, and people are like, oh, can't do this. I'd be in favor of you know fire extinguishers and, and they start listing off pretty much everything that's in this ordinance. And again, I'm I'm not. I mean, would you think that people want to exceed the the rating of the house? How big it that the actually can fit in there? I, I think that depending on who you talk to, that they're going to have problems with different parts of it. Yeah. I think it's going to be a wide variety of of issues. Yeah. Um, somebody within 30 minutes drive, right? That that's what it makes sense to me. Right. If there if there's a problem, but there's a lot of people that don't live within 30 minutes of. Yeah, but you can get a neighbor. Local to do that yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't think so. You, you get a property. Oh, I got it in Plainfield. People are doing a property manager, right. and you're adding costs. Yeah, right, right. yeah but you're you're getting thirty five hundred dollars a week, and you build that into your rent. 
I mean, most of these places, if you don't have somebody nearby, they already are hiring a property manager, right? So if you're, I'm going to put on Airbnb, right? Yeah. There are expectations built in. So you already have a property manager, yeah. you already have someone plowing and mowing, and you already have a cleaning person. So I, I think a lot of these things that are in here that people are like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. if you've ever done a short-term rental, right. there are already Sorry, stipulations yeah. you're familiar with. They're not new. I think what it does is it sets expectations of being a good neighbor and puts people on notice uh, to things they might not know, like, hey, there's a fireworks ordinance, like, agree with it or not, this is still the expectation in the town of Enfield. And so I, I think we can pick it apart for everyone's sake, but it's, I think if we went at it from the spirit, spirit of, we want to set standard expectations of how to be a good neighbor so that both you can use your property and you can gain revenue so that you can continue to pay your taxes and draw in people who are going to leave their dollars in Enfield. And also you're not going to run off the neighbor next door, right? Like I think if we try to go at it as crafting a middle ground um, and being open to helping people be good neighbors, we're gonna get a little bit further. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't see any of the proposed ordinances as being really onerous and like you know if if you've got a three bedroom house and you have a septic that's designed for that three bedroom house you know when you buy the house how many people you can reasonably fit in if you're renting it as a short-term rental and you put bunk beds in each bedroom and you put some more down in the basement, you've got your septic limit times two or times 2.5. And A, that's gonna cost you money as the property owner when the thing fails. B, it's going to piss off your neighbors when it fails. And, you know, it's it's the same kind of common sense thing that if you're going to build a three-bedroom house, you design a three-bedroom septic. septic. If you're going to build a five-bedroom house or a six-bedroom house, you size it appropriately. And, mm -hmm. you know, basically this, that those kinds of limitations provide the same kind of protection for the neighborhood and they they quantify it to somebody who's an absentee owner mm -hmm. who may not know or may not care the that, other thing that's with, my theory the other thing with the short-term light long rentals is most of them are on the lakes they're not all on the lakes but most of them are on the lakes and if you've got a cabin on the lake that you're short term rental and you got 18 people in there there's a real good chance that the sewer is going to go into the lake because well the thing is though gonna, because a lot of those on the lake also have some of the older ones have dry wells they don't even have leach fields mm -hmm. yeah well the thing is though you're making the assumption there right the person who's doing the renting says i'm not going to rent this weekend to 30 people reality is he rents to one or two people and they invite all their friends and the owner has no clue what's going on yeah but well it, but, yes and no <clears throat> right if you google and look for airbnbs right. in enfield and you look for dartmouth college because when people propose a rental and they say they're in the dartmouth region right they're trying to attract people who are coming from out of town so say you come for the big game right and I'm picking on Dartmouth because they're the largest local college and a lot of people do come in for games. And I think that's fabulous for our economy. But you say, I have a six bedroom rental. It can host a large party. Mm -hmm. So you're still saying, you know, I'm not six, bedroom, six person rental you host right. a large party. Now you've got a party and it's a hopping party. And I promise that you that you have that happen on the lakes here. We have targeted housing. We have right, one right, right up the person up. said six person. But then they say comma and host a large party. That's right. how it turns into 30. And, and you, get, really you know, if, if you say that a house is for six people mm -hmm. and it's registered with the town, this property is good for six people plus 
two guests and the neighbors complain because there's a party going on all afternoon and into the night with 20 people, then there's, you know, there's, okay, you've, you're licensed or registered for six and you've got a party of 20, there's a disparity here and, you know, well, what about me as an individual saying, I'm going to have a, a big party at my house for the weekend? So you could do that every week? Every every three what days. They turn over within three days is like probably so the minimum. He's talking about his own house. Right. Right, but he's not going to do it probably that every How's that difference? Days. That's if the term. If it gets into well, a... Plenty, plenty of difference because when you're having your big party, you invite the neighbors. Because, no, no, no. Yeah, you do. Not me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to go back. Are we not talking about specific items in this ordinance that are restrictions? You know, you can make right. a list of those. Mm -hmm. Right. That while we say this is just about not not prohibiting Airbnb, not short term rooms, mm -hmm. short term rooms, uh, but there are some restrictions. In here. So we need to debate each and every one of those. Mm -hmm. Right, that would be one of them. Mm -hmm. The number of people, that sort of thing. I happen to think that I wouldn't worry about it initially. I think the best thing about this ordinance is, and the thing we should key on at least for the first year or two, is the fact that we're finding out where these places are by via the permit process. So we have no idea right now. I assume the town manager has no idea how many Airbnbs are out there, short-term rentals are out there. Do we do we have a right to know? Well, I have, we I have, we do. I think we have a compelling interest well, I, I to understand get, what the problem okay, okay. may be in the town. If it if it if it truly is that we're 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 eating up all of our housing in short term rentals and we have no more housing for workforce rental, then we can deal with it. But we don't know. We don't know where these are or how many. We don't know what impact it really had. It's all anecdotal. So I, I, I really like the part about the the permit, maybe the fees too high or whatever. We could argue that, but it, it, at least it's registered. In terms of what specifically we won't permit, I, I think we get too far into the weeds pretty darn quick on that. And, and we're, we're, we're creating restrictions on things that may not ever happen, or if they do, they're so rare that, okay, it happens now, and then a giant party happens. Okay, it's a, it's in the news, and but it'll, it probably won't happen again for five years. I took people out of the road. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not anecdotal. <laughs> um, Ed had a comment, and then Phil. Yeah, um, you know, there was starting to be a little bit of discussion about, you know, these too many people show up. Is it the homeowner's problem? Is it not? That's part of the discussion we're going to have here. And part of our discussion is, is this a town ordinance, select board ordinance, if we decide to do it, or is it a zoning issue? And to me, that comes down to how we decide to enforce that. Right now, we have no enforcement mechanism. But if 30 people show up at a house and we have this in place, the police can show up and say, you're allowed six. So six of you can stay, the rest are leaving and, <laughs> and we can deal with it. But at this point, we, we can't do that. You got and we do have a lot of people from out of state or have some people, maybe not a lot, it's not the right word, but we do have some people that, I know one in particular, they bought a really nice house on the lake with no interest of ever coming. It's completely short term rental and it's a restricted street. So are they going to have 20 cars on that street parking along the side? Are they going to park there? I mean, if we just allow them to run, we're going to start impacting property values in the area. And I think we need to look at that as well. Well, you do have that uh, I have line that's mentioned in there. And mm -hmm. that's kind of interesting to me. I don't think anywhere in the rest of our ordinances, planning board ordinances, is there a fine? And I was kind of scratching my head over that, thinking, well, yeah, it was, it was a select board. thing. Or? Select board. It was originally intended to be a select board. It was, it was, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, did, I have two yeah. years of experience renting a house on the Chesapeake through Airbnb. And I can tell you that probably 10% of the renters, this ordinance would have helped me. That's everybody else was really 
quite good, but we had this one huge party, you know, and the house could sleep nine people and they had like 30 people in there. And I'm, I'm lucky my septic held <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. But I, I really think, you know, we have to go through it, but I really think the Tom and Enfield would be wise to put something like this together. Just based on my experience for two years of, and it was booked pretty much year round. And, um, but you do have the option if you get a bad renter, you can blackball them in, in Airbnb. And then I had to do that with that one, that one group. Mm -hmm. So you, you can say never rent to these people ever again. They get a bad rating and then, but you're going to have somebody else going to come along, you know, and try to yeah, pull the sure. certain thing. Yeah, there's an endless supply. So I, I would support some version of this of this ordinance. So may, maybe to to move the discussion on tonight, uh, what do people think about uh, following Tim's suggestion and just start to make a list of the topics that this addresses, and then if we have time, we can start discussing them one by one, and if not, then we can leave it for the next time. I'd suggest going by line and number and being very organized so that you can start at the and go through each person and then who has a comment and go down through so that we're not jumping around. I'm just to give it a little structure. Well, can we can we get some input from Nancy? Yeah, she's she's got she's got a five she's got a five point rating on uh, <laughs> That's right, <laughs> and I'm and here. The host. Everybody likes the host. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm here when I have guests. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. when I opened back in '97 or '98, I had to go to the zoning board and I had to go to the planning board before I could get permission to have guests in this place. The Airbnb people in this town have had to do none of that. Um, my get my neighbors all had the opportunity to comment as to whether or not they wanted strangers in the area, and I think that's appropriate. One of you asked, "Do we really have the right to do this?" And yeah, I think you do. I think you have the responsibility to do it. Um, I've gone to Airbnb for my own reasons, but and, and it's working out fine. But I am here, and I think that that's. That's one of the, the differences. You're talking about big houses that are being bought with nobody having any connection to town. And I, I, I also worry a lot about workforce housing and, and how much of that is getting eaten up with, with rentals because they're close to Dartmouth. Um, I think those are all real issues. And I mean, I'll, I'll go back to the, to the zoning and planning again. I've got my variance, I guess. So I don't have to mess with that, but but um, nobody else has had to go through that, and it really was kind of irritating to me. And I, you know, the the health department where I test my water all the time. I think those are all reasonable things to, to do, if you know, unless they're on town water. But if they're sitting out here and I'm on a septic and and I'm I'm on a well, I should be testing my water. Um, I think there are real health and, and responsibility issues that you need to deal with. All right, I'm off my no, big I, mean, I think that was that, that those comments are are good and they're appropriate and I think they're spot on. And just just for you, Nancy, the first yes. paragraph says where dwelling units would normally be cons this you're not this does not cover you because it's where dwelling units would normally be considered residential living units not associated with the regulated commercial activity such as hotel, inn, motel, or bed and breakfast. All right. Thanks, so Dan. It does not affect you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're on site also. <laughs> but you know, your your comments are yeah. are spot on. Yeah, I think. Bert? Um one because it's an ordinance, who and there's no time limit like for a town meeting, correct? No, it's their ordinance. It would be a select board's ordinance. Well, if it's a select well, board. Well, that's that's my second part of my question. Attorney, yeah. yeah. Okay. I talked to the attorney, and even being a select board ordinance, this may need to go to, go to town meeting. meeting. Okay. So I'm assuming that's going to be this town meeting then. So oh, we yeah. do have deadlines. 
Yes. If, yeah. if we can meet the deadline and come up with a reasonable ordinance, yeah. If we can't do the work in three more meetings, then, you know, I, I don't know. know this, is, this is important. Let's get to get on this meeting, this town meeting. <laughs> I, I agree. Celie? I don't know if there's a mechanism to, um, to if you want to regulate like the, the the rental on the on the lakes, um, I don't think they have there's no, any mechanism that they can go to the town or the planning board. They just do it. I mean, it just happens. That's the way it and is now. And, and there's right. no way that the town would know. Well, the only way the town knows is if a neighbor complains that there's people parking yes, in the street right. or there's a party at two in the morning <laughs> and people are setting off fireworks. <laughs> fireworks. That's well, that that's how the town becomes right. aware that there are problems. Well, well, that's, I mean, that's gonna be the case even with this adopted. If the person just ignores it, you're only going to know if there's a problem. Right, right. Yes. Now, as far as parking in the street, anything that's a lot of that stuff is already covered by what the town is already allowed to do. Fireworks, parking in the streets, well, loud noises at night. Do we have to yeah, but, but, but the idea is to codify it into a single set of regulations that one can be clearly posted so that the people who are renting know what's expected of them as tenants. And two, that the property owners know what their responsibility is without having to approach it piecemeal and have, you know, a property owner or somebody who's there for a week have to go through the entire set of town regulations, which is kind of ridiculous. Well, I mean, it's sort of. Ed, I was going to say, and then on us knowing or not knowing if someone registers, there is a penalty built into there for that, but it's no different than any other zoning issue. People right. build in their houses and we don't know when we find out we have to deal with it. Right. I mean, if I can say I'm just having a personal party. Yeah, we'll we'll a personal party of the yeah. present. We'll find out sooner or later if they're yeah. doing it right. and we'll deal with it, but we can't deal well, with it now. Check the listings on Airbnb. Right, <laughs> right. exactly. That's where I found <laughs> you. <laughs> Is is there a um, is, do do uh, bed and breakfast? Is that a legal term that has uh, mm -hmm. yes. uh, significant restrictions and yes. regulations? Yes. It's, a, it's a commercial venture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. As, as as Nancy just said, she has lots of requirements that she has to meet by way of water testing right. and. Right. I mean, um, Airbnb is sort of like the, just the Uber of. Uh, Rental. Right. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like no. we're just going to do this. We don't care what your regs. Right. You know, there's no regs out there, so we're just going to no, do it because right. we can. Yeah. So if I've been renting a camp on the lake for the last 50 years, you know, to the same family every week for the, you know, how that works. Uh, that that is a short term rental. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And up till now, there's been no right particular right. restrictions or regulations on right. Like, and that happens a lot. I mean, even from yeah. the people that I talked to, there's a lot of folks that rent uh, one week a year or something like that right. to family members. Yeah. Yeah. And in yeah. that case, they'd have to they'd have to build this out. Not necessary. Yeah, yes. No. Yeah, it's no. Make, it's uh, they, 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 out as we talked about. It, but sure. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. I think that a whole lot of people that have bought these houses and just do Airbnb just to rent them are spoiling it for the for the mom and pops that have done it forever. Progress. Yeah, it, no, it's it's the venture capital guys that are buying yeah, houses. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. uh, that's you know, it, live in New York that are buying up prices. There's venture well, capital well, and there's venture capital. There's vulture capital is totally different. And, 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 if if the last name of the owner is LLC, you've got a potential problem. Yeah. And, and I think we'll have a lot of, I, think I would do it in a heartbeat if I had, had the way to do it on my properties. I would put an ADU in. And then rent it as a short term. Mm -hmm. So people right. do absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're registered, you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just have to get the permit. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That's right. But you know, in, in an ADU, how many people are you going to have, and what's the likelihood of those people 
Yeah, you know, it could be a one bedroom, right? It could be one, probably is a one bedroom, Max maybe probably. maybe two. Right. And you're not going to have a lot of cars. You're probably <laughs> not going to have a whole lot of, um, you know, loud, noisy parties. And if they do, you as the resident of the main house, I would think you'd say, hey. Well, the, yeah, that's true. But I could sell my property to the venture capitalist. Mm -hmm. you could, all right, you could. Good. Completely different. So I'm. Hey, as you guys talk about that, that is one thing we kick back and forth, and the discussion could be had that there could be an exception to the registration if you lived on site. Right. If yeah. you lived on site, if you rented to a relative or a family member. Oh, no, then you can't go there. You can't go there. Can't go there. Uh, can't go there. No, if you live, how do you if you live it? on site, okay. well, how do you prove I, mean, it? I mean, how do you prove the person is physically sense, living there versus registered to live there? Check out Airbnb. There are any number of places here in town that that rent a room. Right. Um, there they may be on the lake. They may not be on the lake. Um, which is what I do. I rent out rooms. Right. Difference is that I followed rules, and they have. <laughs> and there's a good breakfast that comes with it. That's right. <laughs> first class. <laughs> so that, that's a good point because when Airbnb first got started, it was all about renting your couch to, right. to, to yeah. a traveler. Right? Oh yeah. And, uh, and and I think people still do that. They rent a bedroom. Yeah. They're going to share the bathroom with the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How does this apply to that? That situation, and we, that's what I was saying. This is really if you're doing short term rentals, you're supposed to permit, but it may be a discussion here. Of right. If you're living on site, I think you're going to regulate it a little bit better. You're going to make sure they're not parking everywhere and blocking everything. If you rent your ADU and 30 people show up, well, you're probably not going to be happy. Well, that's the biggest <laughs> issue we have is, is, is the, the renters going so fast on us. How do you know the renters? The no, window. but <laughs> the people do that. It's a, little, it's a little dead end dirt road. And well, so, yeah. I mean, well, I'm just saying a lot of people speed in town. So you can't just blame it on renters for speeding. I have friends in Meriden who rent their place once a year. Right. It's the week of Dartmouth graduation. Oh, yeah. yeah. They rent their whole house out for five grand for the week. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's their Disney trip. <laughs> yeah, so they take so the money from the, from the rental um, for just, Dartmouth graduation. Just sort of moving on, I guess. I mean, just yeah. come up with our comments and yeah. yep. continues this at the next meeting. All right. Yeah. We got, yeah. We got We're going in circles there at the moment. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Two other things I'd like to add to the uh, zoning change. It, I, I think floodplain should be pretty quickly because we don't have a whole lot of choice. Right. It's either we adopt it as the state tells us we have to adopt it, or the entire town becomes ineligible for flood insurance. And I did talk to Elisa on that. We can summarize for the ballot. Mm -hmm. Oh. We don't have to put the whole thing on there. Oh, that's good. They they post the whole thing on the wall and in, in the warrant of the town report. So you can read it, you can review it, and also we'll put it on social media, wherever else we need to with serve. Yeah. And then when you go into the ballot box or the ballot booth, just have a summary of what the changes are. <laughs> so it should be a little bit more streamlined. Okay. So we vote. So we covered floodplain, I think. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Kurt, you have. A yeah, I, yeah, you I, got, I got two other to ones I'd like to possibly get on. One is the building heights um, definition. Um, that comment came up at one of the previous meetings, and it's currently the the regulation. The zone it's in the zoning definitions of yeah. building what height is. Yeah. Uh, build or uh, building height, and it says measured from the side of the house facing the street, drive uh, street, right away, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Well, I have a long driveway. My house, the side of the house facing the street, technically, is the side of my house. It's not the front of the house. Actually, it says the, the regs say the front of the house facing the street. Yeah, so the front of my house does not face the street of my house. In the other word, if there's a parking lot as a building, as a commercial building. Um, so I'm proposing that it be measured, and then I did just sort of a building diagram explaining what the terms are for the outside of a house. 
shall be measured from the natural surface of the ground to the highest drip edge of the fascia. And the fascia is always that board or part of the house right below where the, the pitch stops and the wall starts. Yeah. Um, and then the drip edge is going to yeah. be that. So it's, and now I said from the highest points. Now that can be the so building is back. Could be the gable end peak. Well, no, because that's not the fascia. No, that's that's not the drip edge. Uh, so here's, uh, so the drip edge yeah, is going to be. So you not get the whole. Or here. Yeah. So you right, you got the the gable, <laughs> but your drip edge is going this way. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then you can have an overhang or a an extension yeah, right. that yells the drip edge in the drip edge off of that. But what it was the right. highest? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. You know, I just want to go to the comment from last time. So what you're saying on his house, it would have had to have been measured at the lake side, which is well, the high point. Right. right. Well, that's. I don't like the word highest. Yeah, well, see, that's. I mean, that's more for the. And, and that's where I would measure. Yeah. Right. Right. It, it the, changed my whole house. Right. Of the function. Yeah. The function of the thirty-five feet is for the fire ladders. Right. And the right. reason they want to get up there and they don't have to do it from the high highest point is they want to vent it. So they need to get one of them. And most and most houses, it's the front. But if if it's forty feet off the back. And it's 30 feet off the front, they're gonna go off the front because they want to vent. Well, the well front. I guess that's matter. How do you but how do you define the front of the house then? The face is the street. My house doesn't face the street. No, the, the front of my house is the street. Well, well, he's watching. Yeah, he's you're saying natural ground, ground, right? Right. Yeah. Natural ground. Ground. No, my gable ground faces the street. Yeah. So they can't get on the roof from that end. Right. But you've got the edge of a drip edge on the gable end. No, no, it's on the sides. No, but it's but the, the but edge. the side ends at the gable. But so you, you would measure from there. there. You're not going to put a ladder there to get on the roof. Yeah. No, look at the. Yeah. Here's my house. My street is over here. Okay. So we get but, rid of street. But it's not yeah. really a street. It's it's your it's the place you're gonna be most likely to drive on. I don't know how you define. That. Right. Well, that's, 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 right. that's what I exactly. that's what I'm losing. I don't know how to define. Or, or maybe you define it as the highest point of the house. Well, that's going to be the peak of the roof. That's going to be the peak of your roof. That's where my peak. It's from door. here. Yes. I. Uh, it's yes. the front door. What if you say the lowest? Point on the roof. Say that, New England, they all use the side door. But then you have door. a porch that's below where you got to so have, you gotta have, have, you gotta have one, one face of the house. <laughs> There's no higher than no, the <laughs> Rob, you are over here for my comments. Uh, I, I think this is a good discussion to have. I don't know if it's one that we can get everything out on the table before town meeting. It's needed, though. This This is really needed. I think, yeah, and I think there should be exemptions if the building is sprinkled. That you can go higher. On building heights? Yeah. yeah. No, no, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Why not? Because it's because he's going to There's so really many ripple effects on that. The rest of everything. Yeah. There's, There's so many ripple effects. Way, <laughs> way going there. Somebody disagree with that, but I think we should be able I think we charge Rob with doing a little bit of research yeah. on what other towns have. Right. I think yeah. we can simplify this. Yeah. And, 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 talk to, and talk to the fire chief, see what, yep. if he can come up with something as a yep. definition that we can grab a few. One size does not fit. If some developer yeah. buys yeah. 50 foot ladder. That's right. But, but it's the purpose is for the fire department to get on your roof. Yeah, yeah. it is. So yeah. their ladder is a 35 feet. Mutual aid. Well, yeah. 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 So we have that with their fire truck. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it's more than that. Rob. It is. There's well, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more. Uh, the other one was non-conforming lots. Yeah. Uh, I like to add a lot of those. Yeah. Um. Any well, this is more on commercial use. 
any pre-existing non-conforming use or uses shall be discontinued and then, yeah. No, God, my notes. How about you only okay. get okay. together on that? I worked on that in the past. Week. Yeah, well, that's what got me thinking about it. I'd like to add, that's that's what's currently in there in the middle of the paragraph. Um, then if a new use or uses of that lot requires a site plan review by the planning boards. Um, it's yeah. not if. It's a given if it's a commercial use. And it's a change of use. It's a change you of know, use. Not the way it's worded. Not the way it's currently worded. And my notes are, sorry, my notes are messed up on this one. I got to redo this one. Under site plan review, if it's a change there's of nothing, use. There's no mention in there about site plan review. The way it's worded right now, you can have a site plan review and grandfathered parts of the previous can be grandfathered forward. If it's, the, if it's the same use, if it's a non, if it's, if the same non-conforming commercial use is continued, you can do it. Then you can do it. But if you're going to change the commercial use, then you you'd go to site plan, and site plan review can say yay or nay. Um, and if it happened to be a commercial use in a residential district. No, I'm talking about, I'm, let me work on this one a little bit more. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because, okay. because, well, the reason I'm doing this, and I think it, it got, the ball got dropped, is the roller skating rink. It's gone through several different site plans and grandfather things got carried over. Get rid of that sign. We know that. Yeah, the sign's going to go. How are you getting rid of it? I mean, that's it's, went through that's two sides. That sign's still sitting there, and nobody said that sign has. And when I argued that sign had to go the first time, it was says, oh, no, that's, that's not from. It's, it's, it's temporary. It's grandfathered. It's temporary. Now, I was told it was grandfathered. It's temporary. temporary. You can pick that thing up and move it. So, so what? Right. It's still a sign. Um, There's nothing. There was nothing in the regs that said wired. a sign cannot. It's not. A temporary sign um, is not a sign. Not There's nothing in the regs that says, says that. You don't see the lights blinking anymore? No. 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 Oh, no. The lions have to move their sign? Yeah. And I, I have no reason. I don't know why it says get your blade ready. That's the one. It's not lighted anymore. It hasn't been no, since Peter no. left. No. Okay. No. Okay. He's he's been been yeah. Yeah. But it's still, That's what it's the sign's like. displaying a message. Okay. The board that displays okay. a message is the sign. Um, it's five of nine. Yeah, and it's yeah. a piece of junk. Let's have someone say <laughs> yeah. that they can remove it. Linda has it's gone on through. record. Carl. It's a piece of junk. I'm pretty sure he's going to remove that. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to do. They run a very tasteful. Coming into the hands, it's not a good effort. All right. So, current, you're yeah. going to work on yeah, that. We're going to work on that. We'll bring it up next week. week. Um, all, all of us are going to look at the. Um, uh, short term rental issues and you know just kind of make lists of what you think we should keep what you think is controversial and should be gotten rid of um in the word version of that um, and um, the same no uh, we we decided the the density was a go right yes yeah. okay all right, master plan. Uh, somehow or other, the bailing house goofed, and our little invitations that ask people to look at the plan on our website and come to our master plan task force meeting on November 13th. The post office started to deliver them today, despite directions to the mailing house that we wanted them delivered on the 1st of November. So it is what it is. Um, we have the absolute latest draft up on the uh, Enfield-Leaps.org website. Um, there's a QR code. And if it doesn't work now, it will be working shortly. It's not working. Still? Okay. It's not working. Um, I just talked to Barbara. 
she can't get it to work tonight. And so I told her to stop because okay. she's pulling her hair out. So we'll get it okay. going. And it'll be maybe a couple of days. But the link works. It's on the website. There's lots of ways to find it without the QR code. Yeah, yeah. people can read it online. They can uh, download it and read it at their leisure. They can print it out. They can come to Rob and he's got a wonderful printer that does hundreds of pages a minute. And uh, there's a copy for everybody. Um, as our consultant Brandy does updates based on uh, our proofreaders who just got the draft today as well, uh, those will be rolled in and put up on the website. And it will truly be a, a living and evolving document between now and November 13th. And we hope when we have that meeting, uh, people will come and ask questions or make comments specifically on the recommendations at the end of each chapter and also on the uh, visions and guiding principles section. Um, yeah, we're we, trying to get content questions, not, I mean, idea uh, right. questions and answers, not spelling mistakes and stuff right, like that. Right, right. We, we, ha we have three people that are proofing it for grammatical and spelling and typos. One of them has already been through it, and Brandy has those uh, comments. Um, Kurt's going to be going through the maps on it and making sure that those are accurate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, hopefully by November 1st, we'll have uh, at least one, one more revision, which will take care of a lot of the typos and corrections that are there now. Um, the hyperlinks will be added. At some point, there will be photo credits and descriptions of, you know, what the photos are, are of, because people from out of town might be looking at it and they might wonder. <laughs> people from in town saw the picture of the tunnel under Shaker Road and um, they were not aware that there was a tunnel there. So we're we're in the home stretch, people. Um, for the first five chapters. <laughs> for the first five chapters, but though that's the biggest, that's the biggest yeah, part. It's the hardest part. Um, Rob has gone to or went to a uh, conference, a planners conference, and ran into somebody from New Hampshire Housing Authority, and I probably don't have the name of the organization a hundred percent right. But they have a lot of grant money and they are dying to give it away. Uh, there's money in there for updating zoning regs as long as it relates to housing because it's the housing group. Um, there's money in there for master planning as long as it relates to housing. And of our next five chapters, I'm I'm thinking that a pretty good case can be made that energy, historic preservation, and recreation all relate to housing. So Rob and I talked about this at dinner, and I have, with the blessing of Rob and hopefully Ed, I'm going to try to go for $15,000, $5,000 for each chapter to help us write three of the five next chapters for the master plan. Um, Rob, I think, is going to be working on a larger grant to look at the zoning and rewrite it. And, um, you know, I think we're in good shape and we're, we're really moving. Hopefully, we'll be able to get this done by the end of the year, but if we don't, we don't. Um, the, the meeting on the 13th of November is basically the final public input step that the task force will be taking. 
and it's where we we ask the people of the town did we get this right did we hear you we don't expect everybody to agree with everything but if we start seeing one or two you know major topics cropping up and you know thereby more than one or two people then i think the task force will go back and look at the data again and see if we just happen to have a cluster of like-minded people or maybe we read the data wrong so that's kind of where we are and lindsay i'm going to put you on the spot and see if you have anything to add since you're task force co-chair yep um yeah no uh, uh just to just to clarify I, I i think david said it and i heard brad say it um that the meeting that we're having um and the comments that we're looking for are on the recommendations um and on the the guide the, you know the um the guiding principles and the vision um and not as much on um sort of the narrative um because there's different ways to tell the story and it is a story it is a narrative this is magazine style there's um and you know so when one of the things that came out of one of the focus groups is someone didn't like the use of the word rural well we're a rural town regardless no matter what you want to do it's a it's it, that that is actually what we are so they didn't they didn't want that narrative um but that is you know so that's not what we're looking for when we we want comments back how how are the recommendations um and those sorts of things so um We've already had a comment on um, in our email just saying that uh, someone who hasn't looked, looked through it thoroughly but is really excited. So, um, yeah, it's kind of cool that it's out there already, even though it's a week early. <laughs> so what, 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 what I'd like the planning board to do at this point is read through it, become familiar with it. Um, if you folks have any comments on, as, as Lindsay and I said, the recommendations, um, you know, we as the task force would like to hear about them. And after the November 12th, 13th meeting, uh, I'm sure we'll have, you know, some comments from the general public which we will bring back to the task force. We'll address them. And with luck, we will have them uh, resolved. Hopefully there won't be any. And, uh, you know, we can present a finished document to the planning board. And then the planning board can decide uh, if that's something that they want to accept and hold a public hearing on. So that, th those are the steps from here, and we're kind of doing two things simultaneously because we'd like to get it done by the end of the year, which is when our encumbered money disappears. So we want to get as, as much as possible done in 2022, uh, at least as far as expending money for a consultant and uh, any ancillary expenses. So again, go through it, um, look at the recommendations, look at the implementation matrix. Don't pay attention to spelling and grammar because those will be corrected. Um, you know, if you feel you want to point it out, go ahead, but we have three people who are already on that. And uh, that's, where, that's where we are, that's where we're going. Anybody have any questions? Um, just I, I was hoping you were able to fix this because it was fixed on a previous draft. When you do the map, so even where it overlaps the pages, yeah. um, it, uh, there's a middle section is being cut off. Um, and it just makes it a little difficult mm -hmm. to, to do. And then on screen, even with the PDF, I get one page is this much yeah. of a map, and the second page is the rest of the map. <clears throat> in the previous drafts, I was able to go into the plain pane section on the, the top bar, yeah. and I could hit one pane or two pane, and that mm -hmm. corrected that problem. It's not doing it this time. 
Okay, so I will. It's a formatting thing. Yeah. I will bring that That's to Randy's attention. Yeah. Um, I, I think ultimately the idea is that it will migrate to like a magazine or online catalog type of thing where you actually turn a page using your mouse or your finger or whatever. And at that point, I think it might be a little bit easier and, and that will take care of some of your concerns. Mm -hmm. But I, I will bring them up to Brandy uh, in an email tomorrow and hopefully should be able to do, you know, a, a, a fix or at least a patch yeah. that will make it a little bit easier for people given what we have to work with now. Mm -hmm. Ed. If you're doing that, I did bring this up to Rob the other day, but I would recommend in the implementation section that the goals I would hope would get numbered. Yeah, I plan on using those for budgeting purposes so people can code to it. So if they could put LU for land use one, then we know it's land use goal yeah. one that that budget's going. I, I will so find out how difficult it is to do at this point, we may wind up giving you a special engraved and signed edition for your use only. Um, one of the, <laughs> Ed, one of the comments that we got back from the focus groups is when we had things numbered, is that it seemed to put them in a priority since people seem to think number one is the best or the most important. Um, and so that's, we, we ended up taking those out because we received multiple comments there. So, um, uh, I'd love to n like think about a different kind of scheme. I see what you're saying to have a reference point, but we also were trying to stay away from, you know, we, we've assigned priorities to things we've assigned, um, but still the, the, the human brain tends to work, tends to hire our, you know, work like the first thing they see is the, the, the greatest importance, right? There's a hierarchical structure there. Um, so uh, if, if you have other experience, um, or thoughts on that? It would be that would be awesome because I can totally see how if you're trying to use them for grant writing or as a reference point, it's hard to be like the third one down on page 23. You know, <laughs> it's not very good. So yeah, it makes it almost impossible to use right. a budget document or something if there's not a way to yeah. pick which one is which. So if, if you have some good suggestions there, I, I think that's but we we have taken out the numbers. So I don't know. I mean, if these numbers are letters, but it's still that's still the, it's still the same abc one two three it's all the same when you write it truly for good technical writing you do put them in priority order so yeah and they don't even have to be prioritized it's right but we're not doing this for technical writing so this is a technical document yeah. if you want it you i think it needs to be a way to to be able to pick them out of the crowd let, let me let me discuss your concerns and you know, I, I'd be willing to bet you a beer that Brandy has encountered this before and has a solution. You on? Yeah, I just okay. want to wait around. Okay. <laughs> um, so what, what are the formats that this will be produced in? It will be primarily web-based. Okay. And for those people who really want to have a paper hard copy, we will take it to Noman or one of the other copy shops and have it printed and spiral bound. Okay. And that, I mean, that, that's, that's the concept right now. Um, you know, when we get to the end of the year and see how much money we actually have left in the kitty, um, we may limit the number of copies or we may say you can get more copies if we print it ourselves and staple them like you have tonight and but the web it. version will be more complete because it'll have the links it'll have the there. links it'll and be much more robust yes definitely and, and the links um will we have the source documents uh also within our archives that the links are pointing to or are these as, as as far as I know, the links will just take you to the data section or another section of the document itself. Um, if we start going into outside links, that's probably a what little. What is the results of all the surveys, all the data? From yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. what we're that's, that's really what we'll link to. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, if, if you want to look up the current census for towns in the upper valley, <laughs> if you're that much of, of a data geek, I think you probably know where to find that data. And it should be at least, if it's not a direct link, at least be able to cut and paste that web page site, web page address. Well, it's just that, that's right, but I'm, I'm just concerned that three or four years from now, that link's broken and it's yeah, right. no longer get you there, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to control it. I, I, I mean, you know, realistically, a very small percentage of the people who pick up the town report or look at it online are going to want to go back to the the, a, the actual source data because it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, Celie. Yes. Um, <clears throat> you you're going to print it for this year, but we don't have the rest. I would like if you could do something that would no, let people know that. This does not have the recreation of the conservation of heritage parts to it. That is going to be in our social media posts, which are the town newsletter, town Facebook page, and the listserv. Mm, uh, what about here? Yeah, we wrote yeah, a paragraph. Yeah, there, there's going to be something there too. Oh, okay, that's what I'm um, worried about. We where, wrote a paragraph we last night. Point? Yeah, we wrote a paragraph last night, Celie, that's getting added to the planning process section. This was not supposed okay. to come out today. <laughs> so, David and I wrote a paragraph last night that has the that what the next chapters are going to be that state that these are the first five chapters with more to come. And then we also clearly state what the next five chapters are going to be um, and why those ones were chosen. That is a paragraph that did not make it into this copy because it wasn't supposed to be released today. So that will be in the full thing. When we release stuff on social media, I'm just saying, all we're saying is that this is the first five chapters. Um, you know, so, because we want to, we want people's attention to be here on this at this moment, but yes, that will be in there. And it will mention recreation, um, energy, heritage, conservation, and natural resources. No, that's conservation. That's conservation. And, and, and town facilities, right? And, oh, and yeah. town facilities. Yep. Yeah. Anything like we we went with stuff that has a, a commission or a committee, an official town commission or committee. You know, I think it's a place to make that. No, no, can we have one conversation at a time, please? She said, "Thank you. You're welcome." <laughs> Yeah, I think the place to make that known is right there. Uh, just add add the, the new ones, put TBD in there to be on, determined. Yes. Look on page three where there's space for the credit or coming soon, something like there's that. Possibility there too. Um, yeah, you got that. Well, well, look, we, we, we've already told <laughs> Randy <laughs> where to put it. Okay. And I, I think you know we can we can see when she integrates it into what she has, we can see what it looks like. If we think it doesn't look good, then, or we want to put it in table of contents or whatever, then we can do that. We can make a change. We can do that. But let's 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 go with you know the idea that Lindsay and I worked out over the course of an hour last night. And if it's a bad idea, then we can change it. No problem. Um, and again, remember that our idea of doing this as the first five chapters was so that we could meet the state requirements, get the two required chapters, and three others that the planning board thought were highest importance. And then we could have an approved plan, which opens the gateway to lots of stuff like grants. So, Remember, that was our, our overall scheme, and we always said, after we get the first batch done, we will add to it, and then we will add to it, and then we will come back and we'll revise or take a look at and potentially revise one or possibly two chapters a year so that it stays 
fresh in the minds of everybody on the planning board and hopefully of everybody in the town that this plan is a living changing document that reflects whatever changes are going on in the community and um, i haven't heard anybody object to that yet anything else any old business that we haven't covered any new business next meeting is november 9th yep okay i'll take take your day word for election day day uh, after, day after election day. Day. um item number 12 is adjournment i make a motion we adjourn second <laughs> all in favor aye aye that's non-debatable <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> we, are, we are adjourned you beat me to it i was gonna <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>